Hello, Pod Posse! It's me, your host, with Design Time from the Floor Up. I'm Lindsay the Stager, and I get to introduce my favorite photographer and friend today, Matt Harmon with Matt Harmon Property Solutions. Hi, Matt. Hi. How are you? <laughs> good. It's really good to see you. It's good to see you, too. We just got to catch up this summer and had a little lunchy loo at Bar Taco, which is always fun with margaritas. Yeah, so good. So I am so happy to have you as my guest. It's been a long time coming because we started out working together before I went out on my own as Lindsay the Stager. And I could not have created, literally, Lindsay the Stager without you, Matt Harmon. Tell me what you remember about that time, about the beginning. I'm curious what parts stick out God to you. damn it. I love it when you ask me questions. Um, I remember we met for a beer and I was like, what the hell am I going to do? I need to hike, like put together this top 10 priority list. I need to have a website. Hello. Matt did my website for me. He put pictures on that we had worked with together, the ones that I, the homes that I had staged and he had photographed. So we had all that going on on our website, lindsaythestager.com, if you would like to check it out. And we took, oh, um, my headshot that I still headshot. use to this day. And we just that's did it outside. Aw. And that's not even what you do. You don't even do headshots. You are here to talk about your real estate photography. So that's thank why you I remember for... because I was scared. I was so scared shooting that because I don't do headshots and I'm, we're like in a parking lot. There's a tree. I'm taking pictures of a person and I'm like, Oh, the this wind works was blowing. because I don't know. I yeah. know. I love that. Well, if you don't do headshots, then what do you do? What kind of services do you offer Matt Harmon? Thanks for asking. Uh, so I started this company about 11 years ago. And uh, the main thing that we do is work with realtors to help them get their listings on the market. So we help with their photography. We help get their properties measured. We do videography. I'm an appraiser. And so we still do appraisals. We do virtual tours. Um, we do data entry service for them. If they need to enter their listing into MLS, we can help collect all the data for MLS for them. We create property websites, uh, pretty much anything that they need to do to get the property marketed and listed. We have a way to help them make that easier. How much do you charge for that? So there's bundled packages um, that are a few hundred dollars and then everything is a la carte. So our most common package that people come in and do is like an essentials package, which includes a measurement, photography. We collect the MLS data and we make a property website. And that starts at around $400. And then everything okay. that's in that and everything that we do is also available a la carte by itself. So on my end, that's what the realtor pays for. I do not pay for that. The realtor pays for me to come and stage the home. And then I tell them to call you and schedule photography right as I'm leaving so that you can come in and photograph everything, the beds, the tablescapes, everything just as I have left it. Now, let me ask you this. When you take pictures for all of these people that are listing their homes every day, what is the percentage of times that you work with a staged home versus a not staged home? That's a great question. I would guess 25% of what we shoot is staged. That would be my total guess. That is such a disappointment and i mean like like when you're showing your best foot forward to sell your property to get as much money as possible wouldn't you want it to be presented as well as possible i that just must think be most really of what hard. we see yeah it's hard to make it look good i think most of what we see is just lived in and straightened up houses that's most common so what would you give as advice to a homeowner who is not using a stager? Shame on them. How would you tell them to, what do you usually say to get ready for you to come and photograph? Yeah, we send everyone a sheet that orders photography with us, like a pre-shoot checklist. 
and I can send that to you. Um, it's got stuff on there about re decluttering countertops, uh, removing any evidence of pets, um, clearing out the driveway. Because if we show up and there's a boat and a truck and the truck hasn't started in five years, we're just not going to be able to get a good front photo. Um, so what's the worst thing think that about you it. walk into? What do you walk into when you're like, I mean, are you having your home photographed or what? The worst thing is when we walk in, the cleaners are there and the floor is wet so, and they've just started. Uh, there's just no way to, there's no way to fix that because it's going to be a couple of hours of work. Um, but you totally know, when there's, planning. We, yeah, I mean, I, I remember some real nightmare houses where we open up the door, the homeowner is sweating, they're holding a kid on their hip. They're like, we didn't sleep last night. We still have a few things left to do. And what they mean is like two hours of cleaning that they didn't do the day before. Um, and we just make it work. Like that's my team is all trained to do whatever it takes to make it work for them. We'll measure first, be very patient with them because people have a lot going on. This is a massively stressful uh, experience for them. And so whatever we can do to help them, we try to do that to deescalate those appointments. I ask you this because I have realtors that show their clients homes and judge them when they're not staged and they have literally sent me pictures of cocaine on the counter and they're like oh i don't think you staged this one lens <laughs> so like have you ever walked in and been like oh maybe we'll just like take the cocaine off the counter for the shot yeah there we've photographed people in beds where they just wouldn't get out of bed um, like a tenant so they're like, we'll just cover up. And we. That is terrible. That. We've definitely gotten home, been editing photos and realized, oh, that was a bong on the, on the uh, bedside table or like something more adult than that. Or uh, there was one time um, we were, I remember this house. I'm not going to say what city it was in, but there was police tape around the porch. We were just there to measure it, not photograph it. But there were, assembled and disassembled guns laid out on a like coffee table in the living room just there for anybody that happened to be walking in the house that's so um, much worse than cocaine on the counter yeah. <laughs> when i get to yeah. a home and the teenager won't get out of bed so that i can make their bed that really shits me off so i can't imagine when you're there to like do the thing that you were hired to do so let me get this straight when you walk into a home and they're standing there in their jammies and the floor is wet and there's like laundry in the basket off at the end of this unmade bed. How long does it take yeah. you guys? I mean, I know that there's like a lot of things to add on, but let's say that like, how long does it take to photograph a home? Um, typically it takes us around 30 to 45 minutes. Um, that's the average prepared house. And we just know going into that situation, that might be another 15, 20, 30 minutes. We may have to come back and, my guys are trained to go in and kind of take control of the situation, calm down someone that's upset, but also to kind of assess, can this even be done? Is this just beyond what can be fixed? And so in that first 90 seconds, they're trying to figure out, are we gonna have to come back another day or is this fixable? And sometimes people will have a team there, they'll have all their family there, they figure it out and they work a miracle. Other times it's just like, this is just not gonna happen today. We'll just come back another time. When you say your guys, how many guys do you have working with you on your team? <laughs> yeah, so we have a large team. Um, we have five guys out in the field that are measuring and taking pictures of houses. We've got a support team, our scheduling team. We've got a delivery team that's making sure everything gets delivered. And then we've got several um, partners, like contractors that we work with that specialize in certain things that we do. So there's 17 of us total that work together every day to get all of our appointments done. Is everybody driving their own car or do you have cars that say Matt Harmon Property Solutions? We only have two company cars. So the other guys are driving their own cars, but I hope to have a fleet of cars one day. And what are they cool. delivering? Pizza? <laughs> no, it's just they're carrying their camera equipment around and... I so you're like delivering like the cars. stuff for them to have when they get there. Oh, the delivery team. I want the pizza. It's not, it's way more boring than pizza. No, we just, when you're, <laughs> we realized when we're doing 
like 35 or 40 houses in a day. And every house that we saw has multiple components. Like this one has measure only. This one's measuring photos and video. Someone at the end of the day has to sort all of that or, or really the next day sort all of that and make sure all 40 appointments are delivered with the right components at the right price on the right time. So we created a, a delivery team that does that, that goes through every order from the previous day. Or if someone orders a same day rush, we're doing that in the afternoon and evening, getting that day's work to the people in the correct way. It just couldn't be done anymore by the people doing the actual photography and measuring. It's just too much. I just realized how hard I make it on you photographers because I am very specific about my time that I want my staged home photographed. Mm. So you just did a house that I staged for Catherine Baldwin last week, who has been a guest on this podcast. She's a very dear okay. friend of mine. You guys, I, I say, you know, if I'm going to get there at 930 in the morning, that I need scheduled, then I need pictures scheduled no earlier than two, just so you don't walk in at 12 and every single cabinet and drawer in the house is open. But that must be hard to like accommodate that because you have 30 to 45 a day, Matt. I had no idea you did that many. That's peak. That's like the most we can do. A typical day for us right now is 20 or 25 houses just because the market's a little bit slower. But it is challenging when people need an exact time because we're basically on geography. You know, I've got a guy going to Clayton today. He's got five houses right. in Clayton. I need to do this one first to make all the other four make sense. And so if that first one writes back and says, actually, Lindsay, the stager needs you here too. We jumble the whole day and we make it work. But it, it that is I'm one so of the sorry. complexities of, of making it work. Don't apologize. Mm -hmm. It's like well, maybe what our I scheduling team is there for. But maybe I'm making it easier for you because you know it's going to look good, which is going to make your life easier. Yeah. Shooting a stage tome is so much more fun than shooting one that is either empty or just lived in because we're trying to solve problems with every shot with a lived in house. You know, they've got boxes already in the room or they've got, you know, beds not made. They've problems everywhere. We're solving problems in every room. They've got a dog bed out. Well, can we move the dog bed, but with a stage tome where it said we're able to think creatively. And this is what I tell my, my realtor clients all the time. You are wasting your money and our time, and which is the time you're paying for, if we're solving homeowner problems the whole time and not thinking creatively. You know, my right? guys and need to have be you, done. Do you have to make beds? It has happened. I, I really, especially since COVID, really don't like touching beds or towels, but it has happened. Um, wow. Wow. Uh, but you know what, if we're doing that, if we're making a bed, if we're cleaning up a dog bed, we're not thinking creatively about the, the best shots in that house. And that is what you want. And so that's why it's so much better. You're turning your creative ready. side into this like laborious problem solving yeah. that you were not hired to do. Yeah. That sucks. Because the guys are doing five to seven houses a day, they can't do the cleanup and also then think creatively. It's kind of like you get one or the other. You get the cleanup. And then a quick shoot that then they're doing their best, but it's not going to be as creative or you get a full appointment of creativity. And that is really the most bang for your buck. Truly. So when you walk into a home and let's say just to make it so that it's like your ideal situation, it's staged. What are mm -hmm. you looking forward to shooting the most? What's your favorite room to shoot? Hmm. I have always loved foyer shots, especially ones that have a nice lines, a stairway that goes up. Um, I love shooting front doors from the inside. I love if there's a little table that's been staged. That is my favorite shot to frame up. I um, love that. I'm going to think about well, that every yeah. single time I stage a foyer now. Yeah. What's funny is because... I, I love it. And the reason I know that everyone doesn't is I've got realtors writing me back saying, please don't ever send me a picture of the staircase again. And I'm like, okay, I think the foyer is great. And I think it tells a story of how you get from one place to another. Um, but I some, think that's one of the most important shot. shots. I think yeah. it's one of the most important. And two things. I like to give a psychological... Um, 
it's like a psychological tease. If I can put a mirror over the table in the foyer so that when the potential buyer walks in and sees their face in the mirror in the house, yeah. then that yeah. does something. And that's a good psychological little tease. But the next thing is, I think that that shot of the stairway, especially if it's grand or if it has a landing at the top or their sconces mm -hmm. up the um, hallway wall or something, what order do you think is the most important to put pictures, like to tell the story to the buyer who's looking at them on MLS? What's the order you think is yeah. best? It's a great question. We think about it a lot. Um, we always, um, we may shoot them way out of order uh, in the field, but what we try to do when we edit them and put them in order is do the front exteriors first. Uh, we typically will then start with the entry, go to the main living areas, the family room, the kitchen, the dining room. We're trying to show all of those big main living areas. And then we're going to step into the secondary first floor areas, like a home office, like a laundry room, um, breakfast nook. We're kind of telling the story as you flow through the house. And then we're probably going to go to the second floor and then and show the primary rooms first, the, the bedrooms bathrooms and then do something like a basement third floor would be the last thing that we would show in that order and then the rear exterior photos neighborhood amenity photos we typically throw those in at the end if you have a first floor master bedroom which is an asset would you show that as you're showing the first floor of the kitchen and the living room if it's Definitely. on the first floor yeah we try to group all the whole floor together so that you know you know, I'm looking at the whole Where first floor goes. set of photos. Yeah, exactly. Do you do the Matterhorn thing? <laughs> Matterport. <laughs> yes, we do. We do. I call um, it the Matterhorn. Yeah. Tell us yep, about the Matterport. Shows... Yeah, so what it does is it just creates a 3D scan of a property. And uh, the thing that the Matterport product is kind of known for is their dollhouse view which allows you to kind of move the house around like a dollhouse and show from any angle what it would look like to step into a room. And then once you're in it, you can navigate around. You can look from any point. You can kind of walk through the house. It was very popular during COVID when people were having it's to such a great buy idea. houses without such doing such a great showings. idea. Yeah. And also, I would um, like to say to any realtor who tells you not to send them a picture of the stairway, I would like to say... I want you to change your mindset completely, realtors, because as a stager, I have replaced that old carpet so that when you first walk yeah. in and you see this stairwell, you are greeted with brand new carpet. That's a big deal. And yeah. also, it, have we painted the banisters? That's a big yeah, deal yeah. to show. If the banister is the natural wood that's going with the blonde floor, or have we painted it black? Um, what are the... Um, what are these things called on the side of the stairs that any designer knows that I can't come up with right now? Um, the, um, the, the things that line the stairs. We need to know Ballisters? what that looks like. Are they? Yeah. 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 Are they wrought iron? Are they spindles? Are yeah. they wood? Like showing the stairwell is such a major thing that I, as a stager and I, as a buyer need to see in a house. Just so you know. Totally agree. And hopefully they're listening and they will change their mind. You're welcome. What about half baths? Do you have a feeling about photographs of half bathrooms? I have something to ask you because I just photographed my bathroom today to put up on my Instagram because of the recent renovation. And here's what I would like to ask you. Okay. How do you get the whole shot of this little bathroom? Is it the lens that makes it look bigger like, how do you make that happen where it's like you can see the whole thing? Yeah, there's a couple of things to that. First of all, like a, an average half bath shot, you're going to get a lot of mirror, sink, or toilet. You're, it's tough to get all of it, and you're not going to get the floor unless you shoot it portrait style, which our MLS really doesn't play nicely with, so we never send things portrait style. Um, it's a wide-angle lens. Uh, we don't do a, like a fisheye lens, which looks crazy and distorted. But we shoot with a nice um, 17 to 40 millimeter lens that gives us a good, um, good wide uh, width 
for a shot like that and we get low um getting low will make it so you're not just getting a shot of like the towel and the mirror and just trial and error sometimes a half bath you have to shoot it from the hallway you know you can't really be at the doorway and see it you got to be in the hallway and show the context okay this is beside the laundry room and i can see that in this doorway there's a sink and a toilet and that's all i need to see i don't need to see it super close up right and then um Britt's telling me that we have to take a break, but I'm not done with this. Um, um, what about like a shower curtain? Like, do you want to have the shower curtain open to show the tile and the shower? It depends on what's behind it, really. If it's nice custom tile, we try to always open those up. Um, if you're just showing a fiberglass, if it's hiding fiberglass, I don't think so. But it can make a bathroom look a lot bigger in a picture to have the curtain open. Um Again, that's a really, that, that changed in COVID. Shower curtains were a thing that people didn't want us touching while we were in their house. We didn't particularly want to touch it either. They don't really get cleaned very often. So right. we would kind of shoot it as it is. We would say, this is a thing that you need to have it as you want it when we go there because we're not moving towels. We're not making beds. We're not opening shower curtains. And so it's kind of stayed that way. Unless it's halfway open and needs to be one way or the other, we're leaving it as they've said it and trusting that they've thought about it. When you're doing this wide angle, are you using a tripod they, or are you holding it in your hands? We always shoot on tripod. That's one thing that sets us apart from some other photographers in the area. Um, I learned early on it has to be super crisp. People are putting these on big monitors and looking at these photos. So I don't want any motion. I don't want any blur. I want to be able to use a very slow shutter speed in a dark room and have no problem at all. So we only would shoot freehand if we have a different lens on that allows us to shoot at a really high shutter speed. But most of the time, we're shooting everything we do on tripod. What did you ask me about a half bath? Are you saying, like, do I stage a half bath? It's just, it comes up in conversation all the time with my team um, about whether we should include it. You know, you're always looking for what what's important. What does a consumer want? Do they want a wasted shot on an empty bedroom that has a twin bed in it? Do they want a shot of a half bath? I think it's bath? completely important. I, as a yeah. mother, want to see the half bath. Is it too close to the kitchen? Does it have a shower in it? I mean, I guess not if it's a Maybe. half bath. But I want to know if I see that a house is being listed at with a, as a three, two and a half, I want to see what the half is that I get. You know what? That's a really good point. And it's something we can talk about after the break is I know, why right? more plans can show you. Like, yeah, floor plans show you the things you just said. How close is the half bath to the kitchen? Is there a shower? And that we can talk about why that's super important. Yes, you. Look at your floor right now. Is it the floor of your dreams? If it is, I think you should probably raise your standards. And if it's not... Floorly, your premier source for designer-inspired floor. Use Floralee's live chat with real human beings to answer your flooring questions and even book a free in-home consultation. Don't forget, design starts from the floor up. Okay, so the floor plan, this goes back to the measurements. Dang it. And you like doing the measurements. I love it. It's the piece of the business I've held on to and love doing. Um, I was out measuring houses today. Um, but it really is not only is it so important to get the square footage verified, that that number is the source of so much litigation and headaches for people if it's wrong, but it really shows you totally. the, the true flow of the house where the, the photos, people can mess with that. They can put them in and out of order. You could have, you would, you might not know where the master is based on the photos, but the floor plan is how it is. And you can see you go in the door here. You got a cramped foyer here, or you've got a gig gigantic two-story foyer. Um, you have a family room that flows into a screen porch. These are all things you can see if you hire someone to do a detailed floor plan. And you just can't really get that detail always with your photos. We try to do that, but you can't always. And sellers sell with their heads. If they're smart, they use a stager. But buyers buy with their hearts. And if you have somebody looking at this floor plan who is already emotionally invested, they're putting their furniture in this house. 
and they need to know if it fits. Yeah, and side note, I would add to, to that. Say, what? Go. I was just going to say there, there's a new trend in floor plans where someone just does a scan with the phone. Um, and I there are several reasons I think that that's a problem. But one of the things it does is it captures the furniture as it is. And it's just like having family pictures up on the wall in a house. It kind of, it can close someone's mind off to how the house can be. If you give them a floor plan that says the bed has to go here or the bed is here, they're going to think, oh, the bed has to go here. Um, so I, I really don't like that style of floor plan that already has their personal furniture in place. No. Also, um, these scans, the technology is eventually going to get there, but right now, they're just not accurate for producing score footage. They are, um, they have disclaimers all over them that say, you know, these are approximate, these are not to be used for square footage, but all over the triangle, realtors that you and I know are using them for their square footage and really putting their license at risk. And they need to be having these houses actually measured. I think it's important. Excellent point. Um, yeah. Also, that's what you have the staging for. My job is to define the space, to show the buyer yeah. what the potential, what they can do with the space. Can we put a desk in here? Can we fit a king size bed in here? Stuff like that. But don't, you're right, without seeing the actual furnishings and where they have like the bed with the two pillows and they're saying that that has to be up against the wall, totally agree. Speaking um, of telling the story of the space you're in, are you in the Blue Hague room? Oh, what an excellent segue. You're so smart. I am in the Blue Hague room. Um, yes, I am sitting here in my newly renovated living room. Do you want to show it to you? Yes, let's see it. Do you want to see this? And thank you for wearing your Blue Hague shirt in honor of this, <laughs> Matt Arman. Okay, Not I'm just purpose. going to turn you around a bit. Don't say that. It's on purpose and you know it. Let's it's see. A, can uh, I turn you around or am color, I going to have so. to switch it around? Okay. I'm just going to turn you around. Um, I've got my leather chairs and my blue hag and my curtains and all this. I love the shape of this table. Can you see it? Yes. Because I can't see what I'm showing you. So I'm I hoping can this see is it. working. And then this it. is what I do when you have a non-working fireplace. I stuff I've it never seen that before. I love it. That's Aww, so great. Thanks, Matt. Thank you. Um, and that's it. My favorite is the shades of blues and browns. I love that together. Fantastic. Thank you. I do too. Well, when I was reading the description of this blue Hague, they were talking about like brown leather and how it's just the kind of room that you want to drink port in. I've never had port in and... my life, but I want to in this room. <laughs> um, so speaking of stories, and I love how you did that, but one of the things that I use two realtors to sell you is like a famous line that I have because I say it so much. And when a new realtor comes to me and says, okay, Lindsay, so if I have you stage the house, who am I going to have photograph, photograph it? And I say, of course, Matt Harmon. And they say, why Matt Harmon? And I say, because he shoots the home the way that I stage the story. So great. <laughs> well, Well, it's true, though, because... I remember when we first started, this is such a good like lesson in the way that realtors complain about things that really matter and really are important, like the stairwell. The stairwell is important. You have to have that shot. But I've also heard realtors complain that you took a picture of the tablescape. Why would you take a picture of the tablescape when we're trying to see the whole house? Well, because the tablescape captures the feeling of totally. the warm, the warmth and the coziness of this house. I totally agree. And I, when you were asking earlier, my favorite shot, my second favorite shot is detail shots. And it's oftentimes staging. It's not even going with the house. It's somebody's personal property or it's your property. It's something someone brought in, but it sets the vibe of what this house feels like. It tells the story of what it's like to be in this house. And I think as a connective shot, it does so much to tell the story of what you're trying to convince someone to buy the house. 
Absolutely. Um, <clears throat> what would you say? I mean, maybe that's it. Maybe that's the answer to this question. But would you say that that's what sets you apart from other photographers? So when I see what other photographers are doing, and I, or we, you know, maybe we're there measuring and we see the photographer come through, we'll see them, you know, no tripod, camera in hand. They're just walking into each room, click, move on, click, move on. I know that they are just going for volume. They're just trying to get through, you know, as many shots as quickly as they can. And maybe they're sending that realtor 60 or 70 shots or 100 shots. I know some photographers are doing that. Just a massive overkill of number of photos. Um, but what our guys are trying to do is to figure they walk into a room and figure out what are one or two angles that I can take of this space that really capture the most important pieces. Is there an accent wall over here? Is, you know, is this, has this table, this end table been staged on purpose to be captured? If it has, I better not have my back to it shooting away from it. Um, mm, and how can good. we, if we're trying to lead to another space, my guys are pretty good about, okay, so this family room leads to a breakfast note, which leads to a kitchen. Is there a shot that will kind of say that instead of just, here's a family room, here's a breakfast note, here's a kitchen. Is there one shot that kind of glues that together? Even if it means we can't take or we can't include that empty bedroom shot later on, it means that we have told the story of how this main living area works a little bit better, which is so important. If you're just looking at pictures online. And what if there's a butler's pantry? What if there's a butler's pantry that you have to walk through from the dining room to get to the kitchen? That's so important. It is. And lots of times they're way too small to get a shot of just the butler's pantry. It needs to be a connective shot showing that this goes from this to this. Um, one other thing that we're really, we've really worked on hard over the past year is we're actually coming up on one year anniversary of this, um, beginning of September is we totally changed our photo editing process. So every photo that we take, we have taken at least three exposures, one dark, one in the middle and one light. And we blend those together so that we can capture what's outside of a window. If there's like a window view, what's in the room, because our eye does this incredible job of. Like we can see, like if you, if you look around right now, you can see what's in your room. And if you look out the window, you can also see what's out the window. But a camera has to pick one or the other right now. Maybe in the future, cameras can do both. But right now, you have to trick the camera by taking multiple exposures, blending those together so that you get what our eye does, which is I can see what's in my room and I can see what's outside my room. So our, our editing process went through a massive upgrade a year ago so that you can have this super crisp picture of a family room that you can see out onto the screen porch that, oh, there's an outdoor kitchen, there's a fireplace, instead of just like a blown out white window that you can't see anything. It's really important. I love that. Speaking of blown out, blown out white windows, well, let's say that the morning has been beautifully beautiful and sunny and everybody's excited because the pictures are going to look so nice and bright and sunny but then it gets cloudy and overcast what do you say to the realtor and the sellers when they say what is going to happen to the pictures if it's raining this is such a great question and it used to be such a problem when i was by myself shooting houses and the weather was bad at least two hours of my day was calling people and giving them multiple options of what we could do. And so as the years have progressed, we have solved that problem by doing a sky replacement on every exterior photo that we take. Um, even if it's a beautiful, like in the summer, a lot of times it's beautiful out, but because of the way the sun is over the roof of a house, it's going to blow that photo out. So we just replace every sky complimentary. We don't charge anyone for that anymore. So if we show up and it's drizzling and we still can take our cameras outside, we're going to shoot that, replace the sky. We can even do things to the foreground. We can remove puddles. We're going to make it like it was not raining. And what I tell them about the interior photos is that you actually want it to be overcast outside. That is an automatic diffusion of the light, and it makes it so you can see the details of the room. If you have harsh light coming in, like in a, on a summer day, it's going to create these really harsh shadows and it's not going to look as good inside. So it's really ideal if it's overcast for your interior photos. And then we don't care anymore about the sky. We're replacing the sky anyway. So we're going to make it look like it 
was beautiful. Such good information. That's the nugget that everybody is looking for. Because another thing is, as a stager, let's say that your house is way too close and you could like pass a bread, a piece of bread next to your, to your next door neighbor. Hey, did you need some bread? Here you go right into their window and it's way too close. Or what if they have that truck that hasn't worked in five years right next door? As a stager, I am going to turn the blinds so that your eye is directed up and not at the old truck or down and not at the window that you're going to pass the bong through to the teenager next door. Um, and so if it is a really nice sunny day, what I've just done may or may not create shadows on the floor from the blinds. It's a yeah, whole thing that guys, we have to go through. Yeah, my photographers may very well change that if it's creating a really harsh bright spot on the floor because that's a bigger problem than the view out the window. We can fix the view later. Fixing that hot spot. We may have data loss where it's just a white hot spot and the camera doesn't know what's there. So they're always going to take that into consideration, try to make it look as good as possible. I feel like we've had this conversation before when I was interviewing you for something before. Remember when I had you on as my guest for the Real Estate Staging Association? Yes, I do. And we were talking about the blinds and the light and everything. Yeah, so they, they I thought way... angled down was correct, but angled up is is the correct way to do it because you want to send the light up and let it bounce off the white ceiling and diffuse back into the room so that means if this is completely level and all of the mm -hmm. things are like this then you want it yeah. to go up like that so that your eye is looking up to the sky not down which would create the shadows yeah i'm think, and i'm thinking no it's actually the opposite you want the blinds angled 45 degrees up so that you I see so the light two, is coming yeah. down yeah uh -huh. the, well the light from inside but the light from outside is coming up through the blind and diffusing up to the ceiling that, that's really what I you see. want so it's really like this it is it's up. yeah it's not yeah. down because this is what creates the shadow that we were just talking about it, it, yeah so the light will come straight in you'll have all these white bars on the floor it looks super weird and right not good yeah totally that's such good information. So you know, the other thing you were saying about like a, a truck out in the driveway, we can remove those now. We have all kinds of options for, we can even do a virtual renovation. We had somebody have a shoot a house that was, um, the people had stripped it down to studs and run out of money. And we were able to take it and finish it with sheetrock virtually, stage it with furniture and show them what, what it could look like. Oh yeah. It's amazing what can Brilliant. be done now. Yeah. Amazing. So if you have a pod um, in the driveway or a truck that won't start, we can remove pods, trucks, all that stuff. That is so good. And that, like, if your photographer can't do that, they need to, like, up their game and go it's with 2023. Matt Harmon. Yeah. yeah. I mean, come on. So um, are you married? Do you have a family? What's your story? Yes. Been married 20 years. We're celebrating 20 years in October, so two months. Oh, yeah. and I know Married. your wife. I love Lisa. That's awesome. Yes. Lisa and Fantastic. I were, uh, we started dating in college and uh, we had started having children a few years out of college and we have four kids. We have um, Leah is 16, Molly's 14, and Daniel and Jack are both 12. And it's great. Yeah. That's amazing. You're such a good family man. I love really, that. Really, really proud of them. Really proud of them and this is going to be a super fun school year. It's Leah's senior year, and it's going to be a lot of football games where she dances and a lot of volleyball games with my second-born Molly. So it's going to be fun. Oh, Yeah. Um, have they started school yet? No, but their sports have already started, so school is right around the corner. When does school start for you guys? It starts at the very end of August. The 28th? Yeah. That's when we start, Somewhere too, and there. I could not... It could not come faster. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, That's what Lisa's saying, too. <laughs> we are just all, like, summered <laughs> out. The kids are camped out. I'm tired of arguing about the screens, and now I'm just like, fine, get on the screen. I don't care anymore. <laughs> I don't care if you haven't read anything in your summer reading. I don't care. 
<laughs> um, well, how fast did that go? I mean, it's time for us to wrap it up, friend. Yeah. Super fun to talk to you. I'm so proud of you and your business. And you just had so much success. And I love that we work with a lot of the same people. Super fun to grow together. Thank you so much. You are my biggest supporter, my mentor, my friend. Every time we see each other, we just like have so many ideas and we're going to do this and this. And um, I like the way that we agree, but sometimes we disagree. And I love the way that we promote each other. And I'm just happy to see you and have you on my podcast. Thank you. Thank you for letting me be here. Thank you. Thank you, Matt Harmon. Thank you, Pod Posse, for checking in and sticking with us once again. I will see you on the flip side. Bye, Summer. Bye, Summer. Bye, Matt. Bye. Thanks for watching. If you're enjoying this episode, please like, comment, or subscribe. If you don't like it, then f off.